Hi, today I'm going to be reviewing the great video maker, that's the GVM 50 RS. I have two identical panels here to show you the full capabilities of this light because these lights are also able to uh, control each other. And over here I have the 150S, which I already reviewed on about two months ago. I don't know about you guys, but when I research a panel, I usually watch a ton of videos on YouTube. So in my opinion, instead of making a two minute review, which is not going to satisfy your thirst for information on these products here, so stick around us skip anything. Also in this video I'm going to be covering all the cool ways to power this light that nobody even thought about it or they just didn't know or whatever the reason is but I'm going to be doing a few different things that you don't see on the other YouTube uh, channels besides showing these lights the way they are, the CRI, the unboxing and, and everything. So I'm going to be actually skipping all this stuff because the other YouTubers are already showing all this information. And on my right over here, I have the GVM 150S. This was the first RGB that I bought from GVM, which I already reviewed. And this is the only light that I see on the same price range here compared to newer Godox and similar brands that cost about the same price that has a uh, mono light type of body because uh, these panels, they are on a flood side. They have 120 degree of beam angle. And these lights here, they are more spotty. And this one also includes a little, uh, it's not really a true Fresnel, but allows you to do even more uh, a tighter spot. And over there, that's the uh, GVM 10S, which you can actually put it on camera or one of those difficult to uh, reach places to light uh, backgrounds behind objects to light the wall. So I'm going to start with the front of the light over here. As you can see, it comes included with the uh, diffuser, which does a pretty good job also protecting the LEDs. These tabs help secure the diffuser not to go anywhere. To take this out, you got to do this and this reveals all the LEDs and the RGBs are the ones that's not being lit here. And to put this back here is a little bit of a process here. There you go. You just lift it a little bit and then it sits fully. And then you can actually put this back on there. And still keeping the cost of this light very low, they still provide a secondary panel here as an option, but I don't find it that uh, useful because it takes me a few minutes to set this up. I don't like the way the screws are. They slide off your hands very easy. They fall on the ground. And due to the poor design of this light on the front panel here, you can only choose either the secondary uh, reflector or the barn doors. You cannot use it at the same time because they get in each other's way. So there's another way to, um, if you want to do a secondary diffuser here, this light does not include an umbrella holder, but you can actually buy a very inexpensive flash umbrella holder. So you put this one here on the light stand and, and uh, put the light on top. And there you go, you have a little umbrella that you can actually diffuse the light real quick. This comes with a very nice and springy screws. I hate the fact that this have this uh, screws here. This slides off your hands very easily. So on the top here, you have two regular one quarter 20 standard threads. And these ones are, I think, M4 or M3 uh, little threads here. So the easiest way to assemble this panel here, just mount it outside the light. As you can see, it looks like this here, this little tiny screws. Put this on top here. It takes a second to screw in. And this provides an okay diffusion. I mean, it does a little something, but I would recommend that you use the barn doors. And the barn doors here, this is what got me so pissed off that I actually have to send one of these panels back to be replaced because uh, I am the most careful person on the planet as far as bathing equipment. I don't break anything. And believe it or not, I managed to strip the threads. What happens is uh, these threads here, this material that this screws is made is very soft. So if you screw, Somehow, even if you go gentle with it, you might strip the threads. Be very careful, I'm warning you, before you try to uh, put these barn doors in there. This whole barn door system and this reflector here, I really hate. Or you can simply uh, put the screws on the front. There is the uh, GVM 480LS. The screws, you can actually uh, put it right here, the, bar the barn door attaches on the front of, of the lights because they made the panel slightly higher. So the screws they go here, it does not interfere with the RGB lights at all or whatever LEDs you might have here. So this barn door is here because this is a 120 degree flood light. You cannot use this barn door to kind of a shape lights. And as you probably noticed, everyone is complaining about this gap here that uh, you can't really control the light spill here. But I don't find that too much of a big deal because even if I crank this up at 
the bleed here uh, due to a certain distance. It's not going to be affecting a lot of your exposure here. It might, depending on what you're doing. Another solution would be to do a cinefoil around the light. So when you're ready to install these barn doors here, you're going to have a lot of fun with this because the tabs, let me begin with the tabs here. Some of them, they move very easily. Some of them, they stuck. I can actually hold the whole weight of the barn doors by it. And then, so uh, you have to find a way to align the hole here with the, uh, with, with the hole there. And these screws, they fall off your hand, they slide off your hand very easily. So the first one installs, and then this one here, don't screw it all the way yet. And then this one here, you have to find a way to align this hole here. You gotta fight with the thing up and down until you finally see it. And also, I could see this happening before I even attempt to uh, install this uh, barn door here, because this aluminum tab here has very sharp edges. So what I did was uh, using a piece of gaffer tape to make it softer and less uh, rough. And also I use a hole puncher to uh, coincide with the hole here. And then when the steps touch the uh, finish here, it's not gonna scratch. And then when you're done installing this side over here, the other side of the light is not going to sit flush. As you can see, there's a gap here of at least a quarter of, of an inch. And this will definitely scratch your finish here. As you can see, there's a tiny little something here. And then some of the threads here, trust me, I am the most careful person on the planet as far as baby equipment. I don't break anything, but guess what happened? This is the problem. Uh, this is a very solid aluminum the aviation type or whatever they describe in there. And the material, or the composition material of this particular aluminum or whatever this material is made of, the threads, they're very soft. So even if you are extremely careful in threading this in here for the very first time, make sure you do as straight as possible and very slowly. And then you're gonna be finding along the way here some resistance that you have to kind of stop, unscrew it a little bit. That's if you don't wanna uh, damage your threads because I have to have one of these panels sent back to Amazon just because of the screws. I believe these are M3s or M4 screws. You can buy a better quality screw. I don't know why they went so cheap on the screw because as soon as you thread this in here, you automatically uh, de-threading the actual thread here. So this particular screw here, one of them, they don't even go in anymore because I can actually see the very first two rounds here, they're already uh, soft and round. So this screw will not go in here. And then this one does. This doesn't go either. Let me try this other one. There you go, this one does. I don't know why they didn't make these threads thicker. At least a M8 screw, because this is so skinny. It's, there's no, like, I hate the screws. I love the light, but these barn doors, I want to uh, hit them in the face, whoever designed this particular way to attach these barn doors here. So on the GVM 480 LS, the bicolor LED that I had here, the barn doors, they just screw on the front here and the screws, they're a little bit bigger. So the design that they made on the 480 LS, the panel uh, rises about half an inch here, half an inch there, so you can actually screw the uh, barn doors in there instead of on the side. I don't know why they didn't make the panel like an, an inch taller. I wouldn't mind that at all with a larger screw. On the 480 LS, you can easily install this uh, barn doors the same ease as you install this panel here. So as you work your way out, screwing these barn doors in here, don't tighten the screws yet. Leave them semi-loose about half away, and then you continue to align. Once everything is aligned, uh, make sure the barn door is not crooked like this because it's going to look ugly. Make sure everything is straight like that, and then you slowly start to screw them in. So this side here will be flush, as you can see. And this side here, as you can see, there's a gap there of about... Uh, they sit like this instead of like that. And this one here has to be raised until it matches the hole there and the height. And then you can actually put a uh, screw here. And there you go. So I'm actually very afraid to remove these barn doors because if you do, make sure only you do it. No assistance touching this thing to unscrew the barn door because the threads, they are very delicate. And I don't want you to uh, damage your threads because of this. So what I would highly recommend you spend 10 minutes on each side of these four threads here. So you're gonna screw it very slowly. 
keep doing it very slowly you're gonna find some resistance sometimes along the way here keep going and then once you reach the end unscrew and then do it again and then when you feel everything is smooth just take it out and then put your barn doors here if you have another person to help you hold the barn doors so you don't scratch your thing or no other bad things can happen so work on each tab and then screw very gently here okay enough with the barn doors on this and here's a quick review of the back of the panel here this is your power switch obviously this is the AC side and this is the DC side go back to AC the up and down arrows here that's your channel from channel 0 to channel 11 this button here is your master slave the rotate the rotate I don't know what that is no idea and also your Wi-Fi so the master here you can control of course the light itself and also any light that's set to slave it doesn't necessarily need to be a GVM 50RS it can be the uh, 150S it can be the 800D or any light that they make that has the Wi-Fi app, it will work as the uh, master slave kind of thing. And then it switch to Wi-Fi. This is the only way that you can actually control the uh, app on your phone. Make sure that's on Wi-Fi. And here you have the rotate, no idea what that is. And also the slave. So here on slave, these lights become a dummy light. Nothing works here. You need as a master unit to uh, make it work again. As you can see and also keep in mind that on the Wi-Fi also the buttons here don't work because the phone app is going to be controlling the lights and lastly if you ever mess up your Wi-Fi password simply tap and hold this button I think for 20 or 30 seconds and this instruction is imprinted on the manual so you can find it very easily the only thing they don't put in the manual is the name of the app it's called GVM easily which they could easily have put in there and everybody's asking what's the app's name is GVM easily but on the menu, however, it shows the name of the original Wi-Fi network and also the password. And you can change it at any time. If you forget the password or whatever, just press and hold this button for 20 or 30 seconds. Consult your menu. So, uh, and then there you go. So the back of the panel here, you have a silent light. There are no fans and this heat sink here is enough to cool down the light even if you are running at 100%. So you're never going to find this light running hot or super warm. It's just like it's always cool to the touch and then you can actually pack it up right away, especially the front of the panel. It doesn't get hot as for any other LEDs. Here you have the option to power by uh, two large Sony batteries. You cannot power this thing with one single battery. You have to use the both batteries. This has nothing to do with the AC or DC you're not going to be able to charge your battery because even if you were having some voltage sent back here it's going to damage your battery because the voltage will be other than the, the very like uh, gentle voltage that is required to charge these batteries that's why they don't make it like this so this batteries only supply power to the light but never can charge the battery so as you can see you have two ways maybe three ways to power this light one is they stand away plug this thing on the outlet socket and of course this is going to convert AC to DC that's why it says you DC 15 volts when you are actually plugging on the outlet because this is already DC and another way which is the actual DC mode by putting a pair of Sony batteries here you can't use just one because uh, it's not enough uh, amperage to drive a light panel this size here so you have to use the both batteries together and you cannot charge these batteries because they know the voltage that would be supplied back to these terminals here it will be a different voltage that will probably fry and explode your batteries that's why the system is separate the AC is one side and the DC is another side so you can choose either DC or AC and then you can actually power the unit off and then switch to the DC and there you go turn it off back to AC one thing I don't like about this power break here is the length of the cord which is I believe is only three feet here but at least they made the uh, plug the DC barrel plug at an angle which uh, helps with the stress because if this thing was straight the plug would have a lot of stress being bent this way here and a very simple solution how to attach this here first I went to Home Depot, Lowe's or any other hardware store you find a soft uh, one side as if it's the other side is a soft thing that will grip very well with the metal so it doesn't slide see and then you put a velcro here and then there you go you have a very nice and neat uh, setup and I can even make this look better it's like when I have a shoot I think appearance is everything I hate to have my lights dangling all over the place and power and cords all over the place I like to have everything 
looking neat and uh, impressive to my clients. When they see the studio, everything is like velcroed in like this, all the wires are like that. So it's just like a DJ in a reception. Everything is tidy and nice. So I would recommend to do the same thing. We, we took care of this problem here by just uh, installing the uh, brick over here. And the only thing you have to worry about is the power cord itself. So another way to power this light that nobody shows you on YouTube so far is to use a V-mount battery, which is the professional way to power things on a, on a field. So the reason why they put the Sony system here is because of the size of the panel. If this panel was this large, you would find at least one slot for the V-mount battery. If it is a double side panel, you have two V-mount batteries. So if you put the Sony batteries, even if you find a converter from uh, V-mount to the Sony, those panels will last like probably 10 minutes because it's not made for the little battery like this. So in case you want to shoot something live that somebody's paying a whole lot of money and you are live or whatever and you cannot interrupt the shoot, imagine this thing dying on you in the middle of a shoot that you cannot stop. What are you going to do? So as you notice, this doesn't have a button here that displays the uh, remaining juice of the batteries. So when you mount a V-mount battery, especially on a little panel like this, you can set it and forget it. So this V-mount battery holder, I'm going to be providing this link on the description as well. As you can see, you can mount it like this on a stand. It's so convenient, very professional. This costs very cheap, about 30 some dollars. And you can mount a V-mount battery here. This features a D-tap jack here. And this V-mount battery also includes a D-tap right here. They both supply the same voltage, about 16 and a half volts. Keep in mind that this light here likes to accept 15 volts, not 16 and a half. So you need to buy either a voltage regulator through the D-tap or trust this enough that a volt and a half is not going to be a big deal for this light, which shouldn't be. So I'm going to be powering this with the V-mount. Now I'm going to disconnect the uh, AC. And uh, don't confuse yourself because this plug has to be plugged in here. So the AC is going to become a, DC, uh, a double DC. So you're going to have a DC power right here and DC power right there, right? So I'm going to be turning on the side of the AC, which is the V-mount. There you go. And also the DC. So there you go. You have just a stand itself no outlets to worry about. You can freely move this thing on the field with the V-mount and the Sony. And in case this dies on you, which I doubt it very much, you can still use this as a secondary uh, source of backup for power. So there you go. You have a professional high-end V-mount type of system in, on this light over here. I think uh, GVM is very proud of their boxes because as you see, everybody's laughing about the multiple box that you have to open when you open the uh, box itself. There's a double box in there. Plus when you open the case, you find a bunch of boxes there. There's like a total of 10 boxes to open. And the manual here states that uh, the packing box is listed as an accessory. But I tell you what, this is the box that I received from UPS crushed that much there, right? I don't know if they put a 100 pound piece of furniture box on top of this box. This is the box of the product. As you can see when you open this box, it has another box inside and then another one. But when you have all these boxes here put together this way, you can pretty much stand on top of this box because it's going to make the box very sturdy. And as you can see, there's not a single damage on the box. The box, the outside box is crushed, but not this. No damage whatsoever. So they are very proud of their shipping and this stuff costs money. Uh, the more shipping costs they use, the more money costs to a company. So I give GVM a big thumbs up for putting more money in the packaging because this arrives, the package arrives safely all the time. So when I received this box, the band, the damage was ridiculous. So I didn't have the uh, UPS guy leave yet. I told him, wait, let me open the package in front of you. And then when I saw the box inside, it was intact. The box outside was completely destroyed. The tape was semi-ripped because of the, the, the weight, the heavy stuff they put on on top of this box somewhere and the box was intact as I just showed you. Customer service, there's something wrong with the light, they replace it 
they apologize. Well, I mean, a lot of people, they apologize and don't do anything. GVM, whatever problem that you have, as long as it is under the warranty or something reasonable, they will take care of that too. And this is what gives me confidence to buy the entire line of RGB products they have, or I have the sliders. I have a bunch of GVM products because they're very cost effective. And also the customer service is excellent and they take action right away. So I am very confident with this brand. I just added another pop of green on the background. There. As you can see the changes, I just received another RGB light nothing to do with this GVM lights but there's an extra green there anyway now I'm gonna show you guys how to use the GVM app which is called GVM easily I don't know why they don't put the name of the app on the manual it gives you the barcode for iPhones that this is almost useless when you go to the App Store but anyway the app is actually very well designed and for the price this last cost again I mean all these features is absolutely ridiculous to have on a panel of this price and this is how fast it comes online that's it, it's so simple to use. And this doesn't crash, doesn't, doesn't do anything, it just works. So the first thing you're gonna do, you open your GVM app, it's gonna ask you to uh, register your email address and create a password. So the next thing you're gonna do is go to your Wi-Fi on your iPhone, I don't have Android, sorry. And then you're gonna have a bunch of options here and then you see a Wi-Fi named uh, all caps GVM underscore LED which I already changed it to GVM50RS, which are the name of the panels here. This slide here doesn't feature a Wi-Fi, but it is controllable by the master slave, which we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And also this slide here doesn't feature the, the, uh, the master slave. However, you can be controlled by the app. So no Wi-Fi for this one, and no master slave for this light. Going back to this panel here, once you choose the name and the password, if you want to go there on the app to rename it, you open the menu here, System Settings, and then Modify Wi-Fi, and then the original name again is GVM underscore LED, appears like this. You can switch to anything, I'm switching to GVM, and then you can do underscore as a space, and then 50RS or anything. Now the password, the original password is all low caps GVM underscore I think admin appears like that. So when you uh, change the password here first again you create your name here GVM whatever you want to write to uh, recognize the name of the app in this case I write with the model number here which is the most uh, easy way to identify the network now, when you input the password here, be very careful because if you spell like a G next to the H on the keyboard here and actually you meant a J, if you lose this password, uh, you shouldn't worry about at least on this panel here. All you have to do is press the uh, Wi-Fi reset mode. I think you have to hold it for like 20 seconds. It's on a manual, don't worry about it. But uh, there are some panels. This one here, I have no idea how to reset the password because it doesn't have a reset. But this panel is here, don't worry about it, but try not to mess up the password so it doesn't give you a headache. So once you're done modifying the Wi-Fi and the password, you can hit OK. I hit cancel here because I don't want to change the name. And then you have to go back to your settings because since you changed the name and the password, you kicked out from the Wi-Fi again. And then you uh, just uh, put the username again and the password and there you go. Now you go back to the GVM app. So when you press the menu here, you have the system settings, which you can do a key shake or key sound. Let's see what the key shake does. I'm shaking. Okay, I don't know what that is. Key sound, I think when you start punching numbers and things, it, it makes a tick, tick, tick noise, right? And then uh, switch Wi-Fi, which you can actually switch to the Wi-Fi. Modify Wi-Fi, you can actually modify again the uh, original factory username and password and check for updates. I can't check it right now because I'm on the Lights Wi-Fi here and the About Us, go back and then uh, switch device. The switch device, you have the single double color temperature lights, which applies only to bicolor lights. Now, if you have both units, the uh, RGB and the bicolor, you don't have to keep switching back and forth to the uh, single double color temperature or RGB lights. Just keep it RGB lights because as soon as you start touching these things here, I'm on RGB mode right now, a simple touch is going to switch to daylight 
all the way to the uh, 2000K and then everything in between. And then the brightness from zero to 100%. And you notice there's a slight delay here. That's how these lights work. But it's just one second or three quarters of a second. So I'm going to go back to the 10% uh, here, 5% actually. Now, when you uh, do the knobs here, this can only allow from 0 to 5 in 5% increments. But on the app, it allows you to go from 0 to 100% in 1% increments. You can go all the way down to 1% if you want all the way to 100. Now if you want to go back to the RGB, you simply touch this button here, the thing is already instantly changing to RGB. You want to go back to daylight, tap this thing here, you are daylight, you are tungsten. Go back to the RGB, keep touching. So you can go all the way around the disk here. And again, notice there is a slight delay, so when you choose the color you want, release and then they update. Like that. And here are the channels that you can change, and they have nothing to do with this Wi-Fi here, because let's say if I choose channel 4, and you still work with the lights. The channels here are only for using as a master-slave kind of thing, so on the app you can actually set the channels, but they have nothing to do with the app control, as you can see. I'm on channel 0, it works. I'm on channel 5, it still works. Go back to channel 0, because that's the way I like it as a setup there. So it's just pretty easy, and you choose to exit the system, or you can, just, you can just close down the application, which I'm going to do that right now. Now, if you use a VPN, keep in mind that the way, the way VPNs work, you have to first configure uh, the VPN to allow the network to come in your system. Otherwise, this lights, even though it's set to Wi-Fi here, the VPN is not going to like it, it's not going to connect. So first you have to go back to your regular network Wi-Fi, and then you have to open the VPN app. In my case, I use the Avast. It's saying here, fail to connect to Avast Secure Line Service because I am at the uh, Wi-Fi here, which no, is not a really a Wi-Fi. It's just a Wi-Fi on a light and there's nothing else to control. So you have to go back to your settings on your iPhone, switch back to your regular network, Wait a few seconds, there you go. Then you open your Avast VPN. It says connected. You have to disconnect it first. Yes, turn it off now. So wait until the network ID on this panel is to show up on your list, and then you click on it, and then if you haven't changed the username and password. So I'm assuming you already configured your uh, network name and passwords and everything. So you go back to the... Uh, Network key, which is in my case is the GVM50RS that I named S. And then you go back to your VPN. Click on the settings, connection rules, trusted networks. As you can see, I added all my devices on top here, my GVN panels, my little Canon M50s. So every time the, the slides connect to my network with the VPN enabled, the VPN is not going to bitch about it, and there you go. If you don't include these networks as a trusted networks, your light will never connect if you have a VPN enabled. My VPN here is set to auto-connect to the VPN, so if there's something wrong with the VPN, to disconnect this is going to be a huge pain in the ass. So mine I have set to always reconnect because I like to be on VPN at all times. If you don't have the VPN, this doesn't apply to you. So this middle line here, you control how intense the colors you want it to be. I always like a full range, which is 100% for those rich and bold colors. But if you find the need to kind of filter down to a weaker green or blue or whatever, uh, is a huge jump from 100% to 95 and also the app lets you filter the intensity of the colors of the light by 1% increments while on the uh, light itself I think is either 5% fi uh, and 5%. So I always keep it 100%. If you want a little bit less you can go 97, 96, 95 and such, 90%. But you notice that um, right now I'm on red and if you go all the way down to 50%, it's no longer red. It appears to be blue again. Let me go back to 100% to switch to another color. This time, let's do uh, green. And then let's play with the intensity of the colors again. 
and you're always gonna fall on this bluish, whitish light kind of thing. So uh, technically saying, so anything below 95% is gonna be extremely irrelevant and useless. You can, you might as well go to the uh, white RGB, but the white colors on the RGB, which means all the LEDs turn on together. As you can see, it's a little bluish. It's just as an effect, it's not a true, 5600 Kelvin or 5000 Kelvin, some other weird colors that uh, represent the white. So if you want to do anything accurate, you have to do with the standard uh, 5600 degrees Kelvin on this light here, which does a pretty good job. It's not really 5600, the, the, um, it falls more on a 54-ish kind of thing. To me, it's not a big deal, but it's still some sort of daylight color temperature. And the main purpose of these lights here, if you want to buy an RGB panel, is for the uh, colors. I have a ton of lights that generate uh, the standard 5600 degrees Kelvin, so I'm not going to be using these panels here for daylight, maybe occasionally if this is the only panel that I brought on a set, but I usually have my standard lights that provide me the daylight and the correct tungsten. These panels here, they're also very wacky on the tungsten side, so use the RGB in full and full saturation as well, and occasionally you can try the uh, daylight, which does a pretty good job. This one here is spot on, the 5600, by the way. But the tungsten, you can treat all of them as an effect and ignore everything else as far as uh, treating this tungsten color lights as a, uh, accurate colors because they are not. Especially the 2000 Kelvin, it's more like an orange effect as well. As soon as you turn off the light, the Wi-Fi automatically disconnect and your standard home or business network comes in and then you don't have to do anything else. Also observe that when you are on Wi-Fi, none of these knobs work anymore. So besides the app Wi-Fi, now I'm choosing this light here to be the master and this one as a slave, and this one also as a slave. This one doesn't respond because this only works on with the uh, Wi-Fi app and this only works with the actual uh, lights Wi-Fi. So this only accepts the master slave control and this one doesn't accept, only accepts the uh, app mode, to keep that in mind. So right now I'm at the uh, 5500 Kelvin, 10%, 35%, you see the updates as well, same exact way the application works. Switching to RGB, same exact thing, they take a second or so to update, and then you control the brightness here, and also the colors from the other knob here. So everything you do on this light is going to mimic on these lights over here. Even if when you uh, go to 0%, you actually turn them off. This one again doesn't respond because it doesn't respond to the master slave, only the app stuff, okay? So a lot of you guys already know or somebody told you already that you have huge jumps on this light when it switches to, uh, for example, let me go back to the daylight. The 5600, when it switches to 5500 is a huge jump in color, shift. So you have your daylight, if you observe my hand here, hope you, hopefully you can see it. And then one single 100 degree Kelvin, it's gonna do a huge jump. So to me, it has nothing to do with the 5500. It's because these LEDs, they only uh, jump in five and 5%. 5 if this panel allows you to go one and 1% 1 increments, probably you wouldn't have this much shift and it will probably increase the accuracy of the colors. So keep in mind that uh, using these panels here for accuracy, uh, I would only use the uh, 5600 Kelvin, which is actually 5400 Kelvin. It's a, little, it's, a, it's a little bit warmer than usual for daylight, but still no big deal. Or you can also use a Roscoe gel, uh, reputable brand name for gel for CTO, correction to orange, and then you can actually do your tungsten by attaching a little C47, the fancy name for paper, for clothing, pins or whatever. And then you can do your accurate color balance to tungsten that way, instead of using the uh, tungsten version of the slides. This light over here is even worse on a tungsten. It's actually funkier than this light over here. This is actually do a better job. And this light over here, the uh, 150S, the 5600 Kelvin is spot on. This one here, the 5600 Kelvin, is actually 54, 53, something like that. Switching to RGB, same exact thing you're gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna change the hue. Let me increase the brightness so it's more noticeable. So as soon as you change uh, from red to the uh, orange, you're gonna have a little jump because again, the other, L the other diodes is gonna kick in 5% power already. Use these lights for RGB only or daylight. 
This is a fantastic panel. I have two of them. And don't forget that I'm also reviewing the uh, 800D GVM panel, which is the same exact thing these panels do, but they are 2.4 times cheaper than this. This one is about 239 or 229. And the 800D is actually, I don't know if it is on sale, if that's the actual price. Right now at the making of this video, it's only 99 bucks for a RGB panel with Wi-Fi with master slave capabilities, daylight or all, all kinds of stuff, barn doors, diffusers for, I mean, that's crazy, 99 bucks. So to finalize the things that people are complaining about, the power brick here, you can actually mount it here very easily. The Velcro that I attach on every power cord that I have, you can even secure it here with a Velcro. So to take this out of the way, you just remove that and problem solved. So no more dangling, no more problems with anything. You can find a Velcro like this, a one and a half inches wide, or whatever Velcro that you want on Amazon, eBay, Home Depot, okay? And they also sell those little soft, sticky things over here that uh, this is not the adhesive side. The, uh, There's only one side to, and also to remove is very easy. You're not gonna damage your original adhesives from the uh, power brick. So you find these things at the Home Depot hardware. And then to install it here, you just, uh, do it very tightly, press it against the pole here, and there you go. Nothing slides. And then you can also secure the cord here if you like, you don't have to, but there you go. So problem solved. So when you raise this light, the power brick goes with it. And the only thing you have to worry about, like any other regular light, is just the power cord. There you go. And I also showed you guys how to go beyond just a regular Sony battery with the amazing power of a 15 amp V-mount battery and this screams professional V-mount which is the battery that it is uh, trustworthy rather than this little knockoff Chinese Sony little batteries here you know if you want to step up the game a little bit with a panel very inexpensive panel and adding V-mount yes you can just by the uh, D-tap cable so one very important thing to keep in mind what DC barrel plug you should buy to connect to these lights first thing you gotta do is look at how thick the uh, inside the pin is this one here requires an unusual 2.5 millimeters which is what you have to buy if you do the 2.1 millimeters that most household or anything with a DC is usually 2.1 millimeters inside it's not gonna fit here so again this pin inside is it's 2.5 millimeters, so when you buy a uh, D-tap cable or any uh, brick they want to attach here, make sure it is about 15 volts and 2.5 millimeter inside. So the plug they want to buy is 5 millimeter outside and the inside is 2.5 millimeters. Don't buy the 2.1 it's not gonna fit in here. So that's pretty much all I got for the review of this light with everything I could possibly cover. So I hope you find the contents of this video useful because I strive to demonstrate everything on the best of my ability and including on other things that other YouTubers are not uh, doing as far as reviewing the same exact light, such as powering this light with the V-mount batteries, finding a solution to put an umbrella here and other types of diffusers. I always try to uh, help you guys out with the best of my ability. So if you can, please subscribe hit the uh, bell notification or give me a thumbs up I would really appreciate it and if you watch the whole video through the end thank you very much for providing me the uh, YouTube algorithms that I need to keep the, the channel growing and allowing to suggest my videos to other viewers like you so thank you once again and have a good day or a good night